then specifically, we've been working on the Lord's Prayer. Good morning. God in our favor or something. And so it may be a common prayer to you, but we've been breaking it down uh, line by line, and uh, we're not going to get very far today. Um, <laughs> we're going to make it through one line if we're lucky. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so, uh, it, it's, it goes like this. We're going to be reading it in a more contemporary translation. You may know it. It's sort of a little King Jamesy version of things. Uh, I tend to, when I actually pray it in public, I always switch back to certain way. It's kind of hard to go back. Anyone? Anyone know this prayer, King Jamesy-ish? Kind of hard to go back. Uh, so, but, but anyway, so, our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we eat and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. Now the King James, for, uh, for verse 11, where we're going to land today, is give us this day our daily bread. Anyone always say it that way? Uh, which is great, but we're in a low-carb world, so I don't know what that means. Um, <laughs> No, but, but, but daily bread, uh, or, or the food we need, and the problem is, when, when we pray that line in America, most of us have more than we need. Now, we, we actually deliver food during the week, some of you may not know that, we get food donations in, we, do, we bring it around to families who, who are in need, and uh, there's definitely need around us, but probably in America, the problem is we have um, more than we need. I mean, we, we go to our refrigerator, and we open it up, and it's full, right? And we're like, oh, there's nothing to eat. I mean, if you have kids, you know what that is. Like, kids like open up, there's nothing to eat. I'm like, oh, so all the containers full of food weren't enough for you. You think we need to go to Taco Bell? Uh, anyway, uh, most of us, a lot of us, we have an extra freezer. Even we have one in the garage, or you know, something, and it's we left that full of stuff, and we're still like, there's nothing to eat. We probably ought to go to Taco Bell. This sermon brought to you by Taco Bell. Uh, <laughs> I, I know some people who have an extra fridge in the house, <laughs> and they still don't seem to find anything to eat. Um, you know, and we, you know, and we, buy, and we also are aspirational shoppers. We buy a bunch of vegetables that become a, a vegetable shake in the bottom of that drawer. Um, I wouldn't. It's like a probiotic, right? You know, it's drink the sludge from your drawer. Um, but, but I've, had, I've had times where I had more and sometimes less in my life. I mean, when we first got married, you know, we, we didn't have <laughs> much of anything at all, not that we're rolling in it now. Uh, but, but, you know, I, I remember having, you know, living on like minimum wage and living on one and saving one. And, uh, and it, it's t time, times get tough. And I remember crabbing for Like literally, like we, most of us go crabbing because we like crabs. I was like praying over the crab pots, bring us enough crabs, Lord, give me my daily crab. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> and when we have a lot, you know, we, we tend to maybe not think about it. Like I, uh, hunting, you know, first part of the season, I always like, Lord, bring me a furry creature that you have created so that I may harvest it and bring it in because it's cold. Um, you know, but but then there's years where I've got three in the freezer. I'm not praying anymore for deer. Like, I'm just like, yeah, it comes, we'll shoot it. Uh, <laughs> you know, in America, we can be picky. Like, you ever, you ever, do you have a friend that when you go to the restaurant, there's always something wrong with their food? And I mean, it's, they can't just be like, a little bit wrong. It's like, oh my gosh, this is, you know, you're like, dude, it's a steak, just eat it. Uh, you know, uh, now, it's okay to be picky, but, you know, just be kind to your waitress, especially if I'm eating with you, because I don't want them to spit in my food as collateral damage to spitting in yours. Um, <laughs> to, or just don't embarrass me. Don't make me ashamed to have my deep water t-shirt on if we're on out to eat and I got it on and I got to turn it inside out while I'm eating with you. That's a problem. Um, <laughs> And be careful what you do wearing a deep water t-shirt, so uh, we'll, we'll find you. Revoke your t-shirt privileges. We'll put a knot, like a little knot, knot, 
what our church. Uh, anyway, <laughs> you know, in, in times of uncertainty, we, we pray more because we depend more. Trusting God for daily bread or food we need um, should remind us, you know, if, you, if you're someone who's read the Bible a lot, there's this thing in Exodus chapter 16. Um, and if you read the story, uh, this is where uh, they're kind of they're grumbling and complaining that, that they don't have food. And, and uh, you know, God provides food. This like flaky little stuff lands on the ground, and they scoop it up, and they say, "Mana, what is this?" And then that's where we get manna. <laughs> and, and so it's this this flaky little food. But you know, Moses said, "Hey, just collect what you need." And on this day before the Sabbath, you can collect twice as much as you have it. There you go. Um, not into that, although if that's your culture, I would eat it when I visit your country. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's the idea with this, the manna in, in the desert was, can I trust God? Because human nature is, in, like at least maybe it's American nature, if I scoop up one for today, we got another bucket. I'm going to scoop up one for tomorrow, right? Because, it, you know, it's we want some more. And, uh, you know, probably sometimes I, I I want much more than is enough. I You know, and so when I pray, and I pray, you know, give us this, today my daily bread, or, you know, give us today the food we need. The problem is I often want not daily bread. Not daily bread, but... Right? We, we, we don't really want daily bread. Of bread, like I've always entered those contests with a lifetime supply of X or Y, or you know, I'm just wondering what a lifetime supply of Oreos would be because I'm. It may, I imagine maybe more. Than they imagine uh, that would be a wonderful thing. And I, I love the idea of winning the lifetime supply. I, you know, I, when we were packing pop tarts for Conway of Hope, there was a pallet, two pallets of pop tarts. I mean, I had to get someone taller than me. It's not hard because I got T-Rex arms to get the thing off the top. You know. <laughs> Uh, because there was, uh, but that's kind of how I picture when I say, you know, you know, when I pray for food, that's what I'm praying for. If I'm honest, I don't want daily bread. I want a lifetime supply of pop tarts, which would be a beautiful thing. And uh, but the prayer, you know, demonstrates our need to trust because I naturally don't want to trust, right? And so when I pray it, I have to adjust my expectations and my trust level there. Can I trust God for my daily bread? And it's a lot like lunch. When you, when, remember, any of you remember, I guess some of you, it's been a while, but you go to school and you pack your lunch, you got the little lunch box, and I think I had Star Wars with the thermos and everything. I wish I had it in vintage condition now because some nerd would pay me a ton of money for it. Uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe one who's like three rows back. Um, <laughs> I think I may still have it, but it's a little dented up because I actually used my brain. Uh, but anyway, uh, you know, you know, when, when you when you come to go to school, you unpack your thing. Most of us, we didn't have to worry. We we didn't have to worry that there was food in there. We might worry like, do I have something good that I can trade other people? You know, because certain things are good currency at school. Uh, so, some of us are like, oh great, carrots again. Um, <laughs> We didn't have the baby carrots in my day either. We had like giant carrots that you could break in to get in the lunchbox. So anyway, uh, but you know, when, when you didn't, most of us when we had a packed lunch, we didn't wonder, you know, it would, if if there'd be lunch in it when we opened it. We kind of trusted that our parents packed lunch, whether we like it or not. There's lunch, and that's sort of the faith we need to have with God is that God will provide. That when we open the lunchbox, God will provide. Um, and that and inside that lunchbox, this is not the week's lunch, right? It's your daily lunch, your daily bread. Um, and we, we trust this children because we, we believe that our parents want the best for us. Hopefully, if you had a bad childhood, I'm sorry. Uh, it was, so we pray our Father and trust because we have a relationship with God and we can trust Him. We can trust that He will provide. Uh, trusting God for daily bread or food we need means recognizing our dependence on God, uh, which is hard for some of us, right? I don't know about you, but... Well, those of us who are uh, male, uh, most of us, when driving, we hate to 
ask for directions. I was wondering what would come out. There's a whole variety of things to do. Uh, but fortunately, the front got, you know, we don't like to ask for directions, and that's why we love GPS. I think, I'm pretty sure Ned invented GPS just because we didn't want to stop and ask for directions. I mean, GPS will still send you some crazy places. Uh, you know, I've been three o'clock in the morning behind a warehouse, you reach your destination, find your destination, why are you going to be murdered back here? Uh, but, because I'm a man, <laughs> and I don't want to be dependent. Or, you know, it's like you go to, and it, you know, like a big box store like Lowe's or Home Depot, mm -hmm. and they always ask you, do you need help? Yeah. No. No. I absolutely do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking for a bolt, and I have no idea where to even find this particular weird thing. Uh, and so I'm getting better, but, you know, for the most part, I don't like to ask. And that's why I love the app, because you can open up the app, and it tells you what I am. Oh, sometimes it just tells you the general enlightening. <laughs> well, that's 12 aisles in America, so I need this one little thing. Uh, but, you know, uh, you know, we, we, you know I, I'll stay there till the zombie apocalypse before I ask for help sometimes. Um, because we don't like to be dependent. But our need for food... Not me by my own strength. It doesn't mean you're not going to work for it. Don't get me wrong. It doesn't mean we're not going to do that. But, but it's this, this trust and dependent. It almost seems anti American because we want to do it ourselves and be independent. Uh, it, it's sort of this, some of us live in this functional atheism. Uh, we, we try to, we say we believe in God, but we really don't live our lives daily like we do. I don't trust in God. I, I trust in my job to, to provide food. I don't trust in God. I, I trust my savings. Content and grateful to Remember this, like kind of, if, if you're a little bit older, to buy a bag of Doritos. Mm -hmm. Pay my rent, have enough for an all-inclusive four-week stay in Cabo. Uh, <laughs> but because you know, you're, you're, what you want and need gets kind of a little blurry and, and we tend to want more. Um, <laughs> and that's an extreme thing, but it, it creeps. You know, we constantly want more things, and contentment is about, it's eternal. It's being satisfied with enough uh, instead of more. And sometimes we don't understand some of the things that we need to have contentment for until we don't have it. Most of us take our health for granted, and then we don't have it. Most of us take our knee for granted, but when today, when your MCL doesn't work and you can't put weight on it, <laughs> uh, Then you start thinking, yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> but uh, if I fall over during the sermon, please understand it's not, maybe I'm worshiping, but um, <laughs> he just doesn't want to work today. So if I'm wincing, it's not the message. I'm convicting myself. That's it. Um, but, you know, it, when prayer a lot of times, it reveals our lack of contentment. Because when we pray this line, can we be content with our daily bread? Or do we want so much more? It's, it's tempting, you know, for prayer, it's, most of us, it's tempting to race through prayer and something like this to get to my needs, right? Anyone have a shopping list they go to God for? <laughs> okay, God, now it's time. Uh, we want this, and we want that, and we want, that's kind of like your Amazon wish list. Anyone have an Amazon wish list? You know, it just keeps growing and growing and growing. Like, I, you know, I say I'm not materialistic, but I'm like, how come I have like five Amazon wish lists? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, or like your Santa list when you're little. Remember when you're little, it's yes. like the holiday catalogs would come. Yeah. Least, I don't think they still have those, do they? No. They just have flyers from the stores. And you'd go through and you'd like mark the things you wanted. And it was a ridiculous amount of stuff that you'd probably never play with. Uh, but it was fun. Uh, but, but a lot of times, you know, we, uh, 
you know, sort of our antidote for that is like, and, and when the kids were little, we, we still do it now, we make them pick out like, you know, uh, like Operation Christmas Child and everything. You have these catalogs where you could, Samaritan's Purse, like where you could, you know, like a family's trying to buy a cow or a pig or something to sustain them and help them long term. So anyway, there's some things you kind of, that's a side sermon. That's, well, not a side sermon. That's, that's just a side thought, sidebar, uh, you know. <laughs> and, and America's so funny like this because we have a whole day called Thanksgiving, right? Mm -hmm. What do we do on Thanksgiving? Eat. Mm -hmm. We eat. <laughs> that's true. Uh, we, we eat more than our daily bread. Uh, we eat someone else's daily bread. Uh, a week's worth of bread sometimes. <laughs> carb overload, and then we go into a carb coma. Um, thanks to that little turkey, we're asleep. Um, but, but you know, we do that, and then what do we do the next day? Last After party. thanking God for Last everything party. we have, enjoying the bounty, then we kill each other over television. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I think it's funny, not funny, that every year, um, someone literally, people will die on Black Friday because... People, I always want to call it Good Friday by mistake. I get it right, and then I go back to it. <laughs> you know, it's not Good Friday. It's Black Friday. And, and you know, it's, uh, you know it, it, it's, it's chaos sometimes. I used to go out, and we'd get coffee and just watch before we, our kids were that old. We, like, rarely buy anything. We'd literally go get coffee and just watch people shop because it was, like, hilarious how you know, people would get fist fights over. Uh, they have five VCRs in their cart, and they're fighting you over a sixth one. Um, Anyway, <laughs> but you know, and I think when we get to money and materialism, that's one of the things in our culture. There's there's several things like as I'm raising my kids and I'm teaching them like what's right, what's wrong. You know, uh, we're looking at our values, and we, every time we watch TV, and we're like not our values a lot of times because you know any almost anything on TV. Then you try to rent a movie, it's the same way. You rent a movie from the '80s because you thought it was good, and then you watch it with your kids, and you're like, oh man, it's got worse stuff in it than I thought. But anyway, you spend a lot of time going not our values, and one of the things that that really not not our values is the way Americans look at and view money because we have a little bit of a streak of materialism in America. Now, I'm not anti America, love America, love me some America. <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we were one time, <laughs> we were down at the beach. I, I think I'm telling this story. We're down at the beach and we're sitting there. We got a potato gun in. The potato gun wasn't working, and we had this uh, friend of mine, from, she was from Venezuela, she just moved here, and she was like asking, and I was trying to explain to her that, well, I think it's the igniter, I think we're going to get it fixed, we're just like working, and she, you know, she's like, but why, why, and I was like, well, because the igniter, you, know, you need the combustion, and, it, you know, and she's like, no, why are we doing this? I'm like, oh, because we're Americans, <laughs> and we have so many potatoes in America, we're sending them back to Ireland, uh, you know? Like, we just, like, we have so much, it's always wasteful. America, you know, I love it, though. Um, <laughs> it reminds me of, like, America's Got Talent. There was this thing one time, and, like, a guy was, like, uh, fireworks and everything on him and all this. And, you know, other judges were like, what is that? And the Americans were like, yeah! <laughs> uh, is there something? And it's just, it's a part of our culture. We, we, but we can be a little wasteful, can't we? A little. <laughs> I, I'm not getting anyone going no. So I think you're, you're on track with here with, with what I'm saying. And um, <laughs> here's the thing: we always tend to want more. What if we only had tomorrow what we thanked God for today? Would we have a lot less? So we, we take so much for granted. Uh, and trusting God for daily bread or food we need it, it is more than just what we eat. It reminds us. Uh, Two, uh, that, that we can we can pray for specific needs. We can pray for world peace. God bless everyone. Uh, you know, it's but it, it's this whole prayer is about understanding our relationship with the Father. It's about understanding our purpose for His kingdom. It, it's understanding that the prayer is, is not just about a shopping list. We can pray God for God for specific needs, but but we also need to acknowledge. That, that, that he's the one that, that gives it to us. And, 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 you know, we might get some of our wants too, but, but we need to recognize our dependence on him, not on our wealth, not on our stuff. Um, trusting God for daily bread or food we need is about keeping money in the right perspective too. Now, hallelujah, amen. 
has to play the round again. <laughs> whenever we bring up money, it's an awkward subject. Um, money is it's often a taboo subject. People don't want to talk about it in church. I've, I've literally, I remember working in a church and someone left because the sermon was about money. We're a smaller church here. If you leave, it's going to be awkward. Everyone's going to look at you right now. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, you know, I'm not saying we're going to judge you, but we will. Uh, <laughs> anyway, just kidding, kidding. Uh, you know, people don't want to talk about church. People don't, and people sometimes, you know, they don't like to talk about money and how they spend it anyway. Unless you make a lot, then people, those people tend to want to talk about money. Um, you know, and, and, and America's so funny because we front like we got it when we don't. You know, we, we like to act like we're rolling in it. <laughs> uh, uh, but, we, you know, I, I don't know how many people I've heard from other people. It's like they buy the big house but then can't furnish it. <laughs> you know, it, 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 it's an American thing. We like to act like we got it. And often, I, you know, I do a lot of premarital counseling. Um, I was doing some this week, too. And, and you know, it's... Every time we end up talking about money, uh, because there's a whole section on money, but it's one of the number one causes of divorce among young couples' first marriage. Because, you know, and I don't know the statistics, it's probably later too, but I deal a lot with, with younger couples, because, you know, we don't feel like we have enough money, and there's money problems, and people have different theories on spending money, and it often, you know, creates problems in, in relationships. Here's, finances can be a blessing to us and others, or it can be this frustrating part of our lives. Um, you know, someone did some counting up, and I'm going to assume these stats are right. The 38 parables Jesus tells, 16 involve money. You say, what? Just talk about what Jesus talked about. I am. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, 800 verses in the Bible deal with money or money management. Wow. Um, but people are still uncomfortable uh, when we talk about a church. If I preached about, about on money as much as Jesus did, uh, it might have a negative effect on attendance. Uh, <laughs> but no, not with you guys, because you know, y'all got it in the right perspective, but you know, others who might not you know. But, uh, <laughs> but right after the Lord's Prayer, Jesus says this in, in Matthew chapter 6, starting verse 19. Don't store up treasures here on earth where moths eat them and rust destroys them, where thieves break in and steal. Store your treasures in heaven, where moths and rust cannot destroy, and thieves do not break in and steal. Wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be also. Now, moths and rust. Now, I remember growing up, and my, my mom could attest to this, because her mother placed mothballs everywhere. You guys remember mothballs? Mm -hmm. Some of you old enough. They do not, they're not to be confused with gumballs. Um, but it's, it's a chemical, it's paradichlorobenzene, uh, which is nasty. Uh, uh, not a good thing. Uh, my grandmother had an affinity for it. It was everywhere. Uh, now, most of us, do you, do you often, like, open up your closet and moths fly out? And, no. No, no it's, it's, it's not as much of a problem in America because we have central air, central heat and things. And so we, we, don't, we don't have open windows and moths. And the little larvae go in and they, like, they, like eat everything up. And then they kind of come out as adult moths, in case you were wondering how that works. But, but it's probably not. But really, and moths were a, a problem more then, I think, than, than for most of us now. Although I start Googling this, and all, people are like, yeah, moths, you know, my clothes. I'm like, where do you live? Uh, they also like damp fibers, so maybe you all need to like dry your clothes in the dryer or dry them. Anyway, uh, but, you know. Yeah, but, but they feed on natural fiber, and so moths eat stuff. And rust is is deterioration. It's oxidation, actually, of metals. But you know, basically, some treasures decay, right? There's some things that, that you know uh, will just kind of get eaten up by time. And, and, and treasures stored up on Earth are at best insecure because you don't know if you're going to be able to to keep them. You know, I don't know how many times, and I do this all the time because we're kind of on a, a little bit of a cleaning out getting rid of stuff time, you know what I mean? Just the time for the fair, where you can go around and get all kinds of junk from all the vendors and yeah. fill your stuff back up. But, so you know what I mean. It's right. like you, they have to give you bags now to carry all the yes. as you go away from the fair. And I've got as many monitor cleaners as I would ever need. Like, we get all our school supplies. I'm like, pencil, right. pencel, pencil, pencil. Okay. You know, my kid will support whatever you have if you have a number two lead pencil. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, it's like, you clean out the garage. And I, I can't tell you how many times I've brought something to Goodwill or or Salvation Army or wherever you bring your stuff, I, you know, uh, or, or, you know, in, in a yard sale pile or even the trash that it was like something I knew I had to have. Yeah. 
You know what I mean? Like you're like, oh, that's so incredible. I gotta have one of those. And sometimes it's because it's deteriorated and falling apart. And sometimes it's just because I don't want it anymore. <laughs> because it really didn't bring us the joy we thought it was, right? And so we clean out, we, we throw away a lot of stuff. Um, you know, and it's like, you know, there's certain things that, you know, I, I have family items that, you know, will pass on to generations and stuff. Because, like, my great-grandfather made it or something to new furniture, that kind of stuff. That's cool. But the other half's like Ikea, which has a lifespan <laughs> of, a, of a few years, and then it's in the garbage. And that's, that's an American thing. And it's, you know, where thieves break in and, and steal. How do you figure out where uh, um, someone has their money when you're traveling? I, I, I read a lot on pickpockets and stuff, because sometimes in countries where they steal your stuff and I don't want my stuff stolen. And, and you know, what are the, you know what are the ways they figure out like where pickpockets like pickpockets figure out where your stuff is? They hang out where those if you ever travel there's a signs watch out for pickpockets. What do people do immediately? Check, Check where there's <laughs> now the pickpockets like well now I know where their stuff is <laughs> because we tend to we want stuff and, and, you know in, in in their day you know in fact archaeologists find all kinds of cool stuff when they when they because people hid stuff by burying it in their house and stuff and then you know that person dies you forget it and some of you have like that. I remember my grandparents, like, when we were going through their house, they kept money and books and stuff because they lived through the bank failures and stuff. <laughs> you know, it's like you're, like, you're, like, opening up a book. You're like, oh, there's money in it. <laughs> so I, I go to Goodwill. Sometimes I get thousands of dollars just by going through it. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But, but it happens. And, you know, people hide it. And, you know, even today there's digital currency, Bitcoin, if you, like, live with your head under the sand and haven't heard of it. But there's this thing called Bitcoin, right? Because that's going to be digitally. It's going to be secure, right? People are already finding ways to steal it, stealing millions. But, you know, when you have stuff, you know, there's always this danger of people taking your stuff, right? And so it was the same in their day. And I think it's amazing. We have something, um, Amazon Prime Day just came. That's an amazing holiday. There is no more amazing holiday than Amazon Prime Day. I didn't buy anything on Prime Day. But <laughs> think about it. They've taken over Christmas in December, so lots of things, and we buy, buy, buy. But we needed a holiday in the middle of July, <laughs> so we're going to create one based entirely on shopping and materialism. <laughs> and, you know, like all my ads online were like, Prime Day's coming, Prime Day's coming, Prime Day! <laughs> you know, <laughs> You know, and I wonder how many people Marie Kondo'd their place and then filled it up with Prime Day stuff. But, you know, it, it's, they're no longer content to make Christian holidays materialistic. They invent their own. Um, but we like our stuff. But then we have to be concerned about our stuff. And so wherever your treasure is, there the desires of your heart will be. We love stuff and store stuff. If you, I don't, I'm fascinated by storage, like self-storage units. Um, you know, it's a $38 billion industry. There are 48,500 storage units in America. And this is 2014, so the latest stat I could find. Um, there were 14,350 McDonald's. There's more storage things than places to eat. You know, we, in America, we love our food, so now we've reached another obsession. Uh, <laughs> there's an average of 21 uh, feet of self-storage available in every American household. Um, that's a lot of square footage. Uh, there's 1.7 billion square feet you could rent. That'd be a lot, though. Uh, uh, for uh, every every person, there's 5.4 square feet. There's 21 feet. Or anyway, uh, the average uh, the percentage of households that rent a self storage unit 9.4 percent. So roughly. You know, one in ten of us, I'll round up to ten because I like ten as an even number. Uh, <laughs> average monthly cost for a storage unit is about 89 bucks. Uh, and so, here, you know, for some, we may not cling to stuff, but a lot of us do, right? And for some of us, we may not cling to stuff, but we'll still cling to, to money, to buy experiences, to give us security, make us feel significant. It was a problem then, it's a problem now, right? Um, 22 says, your eye is a lamp that provides light for the body. When your eye is good, your whole body is filled with light. When your eye is bad, the whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how 
who that darkness is. They can have eyes, they can be used to see which that which is good and evil, they can fixate on things that are beneficial or things that are harmful, uh, and, and then what we bring in affects us. And it's, Jesus says, no one can serve two masters. You'll either hate one and love the other, you'll be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Now, this is where I like the King James. King James preserves a little Aramaic in there that uh, it says, you cannot serve God and mammon. Uh, ESV, I think their footnote says, you know, mammon in there too. Uh, mammon was this pagan god, and it's, you know, a few of us probably woke up this morning and go, should I go to church or the temple of mammon? <laughs> right? Some of you were thinking that, that's weird. Uh, but the truth is, we, we all kind of, you know, money has this, this almost supernatural power at times where I don't want to say it possesses us like ah, demons or anything, but <laughs> but it's something that, that can possess the way we spend and think about things. Um, it's kind of like Lord of the Rings. Uh, I never read Lord of the Rings because that's a lot of reading to do, uh, <laughs> you know. But, but I really like the movies. But uh, you know, I guess people read them in high school. I don't know. I didn't read them in high school, but I really kind of think they're cool. Uh, anyway, I tend to read more. Uh, you know, biography, autobiography, or biblical literature. But um, it's great if you want to read that. I'm not saying that. Anyway, I like the movies. And, and if, if you haven't watched the movies, well, you're probably not going to by this point in your life. But, but you know, there's this, this ring they're kind of they're after. they got to destroy and everything. But everyone who kind of gets the ring, it suddenly goes, my precious. Right? <laughs> uh, and it's like, it's crazy. There's some, like, cool CGI scenes where something gets, like, all demon, like, not that they're... But it kind of shows this like desire for this 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 ring, this precious, and uh, you know, a lot of us get that way with money. And there's something that's so precious to us, we'd freak out if it, you know if people took it from us. It has almost this supernatural quality. Now, money's not bad because I, I think you could take this and you could kind of get to the point where you're like, well, money's evil. Those rich people, and you know, nah, nah, nah. That's, money's not a bad thing. You know, some of us, you're happy today that there's people here who have money because we have air conditioning on. It's hot outside today. The next person that mentions it's hot out. <laughs> I'm going to record that and wait till winter when you complain that it's cold. Um, <laughs> you promise not you know, money bad. You, know, you can earn it honestly through diligent work. There's, there's verses, you know, in the Bible that, you know, talk about being diligent and how to manage money. Uh, you know, you can be rich and godly. But, it, but there's a temptation. First Timothy 6, uh, starting verse 6, says this. Yet true godliness with contentment in itself is... Let me start over. <laughs> Yet true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. After all, we brought nothing with us when we came into this world, and we can't take anything with us when we leave it. That's true. Yeah. I, 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 I do a lot of funerals, like way more than I'd like to. Uh, some of you, I'll do yours. Uh, that's freaking you out, right? But, you know, nobody goes to the U-Haul. I actually would like to be transported to the ceremony in a U-Haul. That's a joke. But, you know, generally, you know, you, you, we, we, you might be buried with clothes on, but, you know, for eternity, you don't have those clothes. <laughs> you know, we, we can't take any with If so, if we have enough food and clothing, let us be content. Uh, but people who long to be rich fall into temptation or trapped by many foolish and harmful desires that plunge them into ruin and destruction. A lot of people, you know, want to be wealthy. And so we have get rich quick schemes and all kinds of things. And, and sometimes people will do things that are illegal because they want to make money. Now, here's the verse that often gets misquoted. Uh, you know, people say that money is the root of all evil. Bible actually says, verse 10, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And some people craving money have wandered from the true faith and pierced themselves with many arrows. The problem is that, that we crave and love money, and it often leads us astray. Uh, now, there's a story in the Bible, and we've read it before, we read it not that long ago when we were working through Mark, and this guy named the Rich Young Ruler. It actually came up in the Bible study yesterday. Um, we were talking about it, and we call him the Rich Young Ruler because this guy... Like he was balling, and he had he had he had money. He was rich. He was kind of like a celebrity of the day. He was young, you know. He's like he's he's twenty one, driving the McLaren, uh, you know, McLaren Camel style. I don't know what that looked like, you know. It had, you know, lifts on the camel. I don't know, you know. But anyway, he had a lot of money, but he was also a good guy. 
Like, you, you know, so it's like the kind of guy most of would think, oh, introduce him to my daughter. <laughs> but, but when we read the story, you know, Jesus, he's kind of like asking Jesus, what do I need to do? You know, obey the commandments. And Jesus says, you know, hey, you know what you need to do? Give up all your money and follow me. And the guy goes away sad. Why? Jesus was testing him. Inside, he had this problem. He was full of pain. He looked like a Boy Scout on the outside, you know, who helps old ladies across the street and everything. But inside, you know, corrupt, uh, full of greed. And, and the problem is, it's, it's hard to trust God when you love money. And I've asked this question before, but when money we have to ask, do you have possessions or do possessions have you? Because a lot of times we order our whole lives around our stuff. Um, verse 25, that is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food or drink or enough clothes to wear. A lot of us are worried a lot about our food, our drink, and our clothes. Um, style. Uh, isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you more valuable to him than they? Can your worries add a single moment to your life? You know, someone said, define worry as putting a down payment on a problem you don't have. <laughs> so we worry about things that might happen in the future. When it gets here, you can worry about them. <laughs> uh, you know, can all your worries add a single moment to your life? No, in fact, it'll likely shorten it, right? You know, we'll have all kinds of health issues because of that. You know, God wants you to be bird brained because they don't think about it. That's just supposed to be, that's a bad joke. Anyway, and, and why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. Don't, they don't work or make their clothing. It's Solomon in all his glory. Solomon was this, this king, lots of money, really wealthy guy. In all his glory, was not dressed as beautifully as they are. You know, if God cares so wonderfully for the wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things, saying, what will we eat, and what will we drink, and what will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your Heavenly Father already knows your needs. Seek the kingdom of God above all else, and live righteously, and he will give you everything you need. You know, if we focus and we seek God in his kingdom, he'll give us what we need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow has to bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Um, some of you don't understand that. <laughs> There's enough problems we've got to worry about now. Uh, and you, can, you can trust. Here's the thing. We can, most of us, if you're here and you say, I'm a follower, I'm a believer in Jesus, we will trust him for our eternal salvation, right? We're like, if I die, I'm good, I know. But we have more of a struggle with trusting him for today. You know, we will trust him for eternal salvation, but we struggle to trust that he'll provide for us now. First Timothy 6, starting in verse 17. Teach those who are rich in this world not to be proud, not to trust in their money, which is so unreliable. Their trust should be in God, who richly gives us all we need for our enjoyment. <coughs> Tell them to use their money to do good. They should be rich in good works and generous to those in need, always being ready to share with others. By doing this, they will be storing up treasure as a good foundation for the future. So they may experience true life. Um, you know, greed is a funny thing. People come to me all the, day, all the time. I'm not a priest. In our tradition, you don't have to come and like confess your sins to me. And sometimes it actually can be awkward uh, because people <laughs> tell me stuff. I'm like, I really didn't even know that. But uh, <laughs> if you need to talk to someone, I'm here. Uh, but, you know, a lot of times people will come and they'll be like, ah, you know, I messed up. I committed adultery. But it's not one of those like, they're like, oh, wait. Wait, you're not my wife. Uh, you know, it's they, they kind of know, you know, you know, or people go, oh, you know, I struggle with lust, or you know, oh, I, I struggle with anger and forgiveness. I, I don't think I've ever had people come to me and say I really struggle with greed and materialism because it's almost an American virtue, right? Um, it, 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 I think it's a little more sneaky. It sneaks into our lives, and, and we become. A little more greedy and materialistic than we'd like to think we are. Because, you know, as soon as we think of greed and hear greed, we think of what? Someone else. Because mm -hmm. there's always someone who's got more and is stingier. You know, we've all got that Uncle Scrooge. You know, you, you know we've all got a neighbor. You know, we, you know, uh, we, <laughs> you're always like, man, that guy, he loves his money. <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> even if we'd love to have his money. Um, you know, so we have to ask, am I greedy? Um, you don't have to have money, too, for it to have a power over you. There's a lot of people who have nothing, who are greedy. They just don't have 
the finances to be greedy with. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's this condition of the heart and where our heart is. Uh, but we tend to use money for two things. Um, a lot of things. We well, to buy stuff, but uh, <laughs> significance and security, right? A lot of us, we, we want to have money because we want to be, you know, important. And that's why, I'm not saying if you have a McLaren or, you know, it's, it's my car of the day that I'm going to, you know, pull up in a Lamborghini because, like, yeah, I got it. Uh, you know, I, you know, we kind of want, we want to be someone to have money and, you know, wealth and then become arrogant. Or, or security, because we think if I have enough money, I can protect myself in the future, like the things that happen, right? Um, you know, and, and it, can, it can be security. It's not a bad thing to save up. You know, but it can't stop sickness and death. See, the significance is this is eh, it's easy for me to say. Significance and security, both of those should come from our relationship with Christ. Not our relationship to money. Um, you know, verse eleven, you give us today the food we need, or King James, give us uh, this day, our daily bread. You know, as much as we might think um, right now, I need a firm, hopefully you'd say, Jeff, you're right. God is our treasure. Um, it's going to be a lot harder when you go home, right? But it's easy to say, you know, I can trust God for everything when we're here. When we go home, it gets a little harder when you're paying your bills. But that's where I think this prayer comes in. And, and, I'm not going to say, say the Lord's Prayer out of like this rote memory thing, but it's something, it's something good to pray, and then as you pray it, think about the meaning. You know, pray, you know, give us today the food we need, and God, help me with my greed. Help me when I, when I want more than I have, and I'm not content that you've given me. Uh, not that I can't work hard for it, but God, you know, help me to not want more because... You know, I'm trying to, to, to do something that I don't need to do with it. And, and so prayer can be this thing that helps us realign our priorities and change our perspective so we can do things God's way. Now, uh, you know, talking about ordering life. I, I remember when, this is like the pre, the housing collapse a few years ago. I remember going in to get a mortgage and we gave them our, finan our paperwork, our finances and everything, tax returns. And they, I remember them coming back and telling us the house we could buy. And I'm like, do you think I have like a side job that pays thousands of dollars that I'm not telling you about? <laughs> like, like most people lie up on their paperwork if they can, you know? I'm like, you expect me to like pay for anything else? Like, I mean, I'm just gonna pay my house. Like I, I can't even eat. I remember <laughs> they're telling us we can afford it. I was like, I know we can't. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and I remember part of it is, you know, I, I think people get stuck in this, you know, we think we can afford more than we can. And then we order our lives in a way, uh, and we structure our finances in a way that we can't be generous B because we want and want and want. Now, many of us spend a lot of time and effort, you know, planning our lives and how uh, <laughs> uh, how we can grow spiritually. You know, we need to spend time and effort uh, how we can grow spiritually or be a part of the kingdom of God, not just how can I get the most out of this life. You know, we talk, remember the red rope analogy, the white rope, the little red end, you know, and some of us, we still have those hanging around our, our rear view mirrors. I have two because I usually someone takes one from me because they're like, oh, yeah, I want one of those. I'm like, great, I have one. So now I have two. So if you don't have one, uh, swing by my car. I got two. Um, you got out of the pile here later. But, you know, you know, Francis Chan used the example, and, I, you know, someone can post this later in the, in the, the Facebook group. But, you know, if the, the white rope was all of eternity, you know, we focus and we spend our lives so much on this little red thing. And the red was to represent our life, which in the scope of eternity is, is a really little thing, right? But so many of us, we spend so much time and concern and effort on this little red thing. When really our decisions, the way we order our life, if we really believe in this eternity thing, like if we really believe that our actions matter, then we'll order our lives so that we're doing what God wants us to do now in his kingdom, uh, for eternity. Um, you know, if we really believe God reigns in his kingdom eternal, we live differently. You know, I, and it's funny, I read this article this week, and it was about something completely unrelated, but in the article, uh, the person was uh, sort of, I don't know how to describe it, but basically they were describing, you know, they grew up in the church, they went to Christian college, 
and they felt like the godly life was limiting. And then they had all this like mumbo jumbo terms and stuff that I understand, but I disagree with. Arguing about all this stuff, how you shouldn't let, you know, you should kind of like do whatever you want, basically. Uh, but I, I was kind of thinking, you know, that's really that's the wrong attitude towards life. And I think a lot of people think that they think, oh well, God's rules are are, are like these harsh things I have to live by. But really, the godly life is free. And if you live the way God has to live, it, you know, it really is a free way to live. I, um, you know, Jesus said, you know, I've come to my life and have it to the full. And, and there's times when, and, and the godly life is something that, you know, you're like, sometimes you want to do something, you know, kind of going back to anger. You know, this is a great example because I think the short term you would, you would see, you know, in my anger, when someone cuts me off in traffic, I may want to ram their car. Uh, but short term, I feel good. In the immediate, you know, future, then I would be incarcerated, lose money, have higher insurance rates, you know, and it would play out in a way that's not comfortable, right? And that's how the godly life is. There's times when we want to live a certain way, we want to act a certain way, we want to order our life a certain way, and it's tempting. It seems like a good way, but when we order our life in the way that God would have us order our lives, ultimately, it, it, it's, it, it's a different way of living. It's a better way of living. Uh, you know, and giving and being generous, tr is trusting God, is this better way to live. Um, and it's our perspective that causes us to fear rather than our circumstances. You know, we need to trust uh, God whether we have money stored away or we don't know where our next meal is going to come from. It's about trusting him anyway. Uh, give us this day the food we need. Give us this day our daily bread. When we pray this way, that means, too, we should live this way. You know, I, do we trust and depend on God? Uh, you, and we should be grateful for what we have, realizing ultimately that everything comes from him. Clothes, house, air you breathe, all these things are from God. And we're grateful We'll also be less stressed. <laughs> and, and um, you know, it's when we ultimately, you know, we get to be a part of his kingdom in the way he's doing things. And that's how we're supposed to live in this world. You know, give us this day the food we need, give us this day our daily bread. Just encourage you, pray this way and live this way. Um, as the worship team comes back to play, uh, <laughs> It's awkwardly the time for the offering, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I, I do. Uh, I want to. I want to thank you for being faithful. I do thank you. I do like air conditioning, and, and so um, thank you for those things. And I thank you. Uh, you know, uh, you know, when we give the offering, it's, it, it not only pays for this building, but it does things around the world. And that's part of what being part of God's kingdom is: is doing things that aren't just for us. As a church, we actually tithe. Did you know that? The church, everything we give, we tithe commissions because it doesn't benefit us directly. It benefits the kingdom of God. <laughs> and, and even as a church, it could be we, we could be selfish and want to make like hold that back. But but we we give ten percent of what we bring in uh, to to advance the kingdom of God. And so there's people right now in we're offline, right? <laughs> you know, there's people in Vietnam who are grateful that you give because some of what you give goes to Vietnam. Uh, we have a Bible college there. Right? You know, there's something, you know, uh, in, in uh, some other undisclosed Asian countries, we've done some cool things. And, you know, Africa, we get to do some cool things. And, and all that is about being a part of the kingdom of God. And so thank you for your, for your generosity and your uh, that. And I remind you, too, if you have connections cards, you'd like to fill those out, drop them there. Love to pray for you this week. Uh, we'd love to connect with you. So let's pray. Father, we thank you. Uh, we thank you for your love, your grace, your mercy. We thank you that you are the supplier of our needs. And um, money's always an awkward conversation, but awkward conversations are where we grow. And God, help us to um, be cheerful givers, not just begrudgingly, but help us to trust and put our faith in you so that um, it's not just about a church offering, but it's about ordering our lives in a way that, that we can be participants in your kingdom, God. We thank you, you know, not for that obligation, but for that, that joy that we get to be a part of the things and a part of your team and a part of what you're doing. God, help us to, to, to be generous people and live our lives for you. In your name we pray.
they're gonna break into a whole new verse. You just wait. I'm gonna start talking like boom, and it didn't even it didn't even end. You thought it did, but it didn't. Um, so Peach Festival is coming up on August third. Uh, we're gonna need if you want to do Clown College, which is balloon tying. We're gonna do uh, more of that training next week. We need some help developing kids' games. Uh, so if you have any ideas, let us know. Um, there's a sign up sheet in the back. August 7th, there's a downtown farmer's market. It's during the day. It's more like a tiny, tight, uh, tiny tots farmer's market where the kids actually go out there and they have produce and things like that to sell. Um, so we're going to actually go out and do some balloon animal tying for them. And we're going to set up some kids games out there. Um, if you want to be involved in that, if you have time on the 7th, just uh, text Jeff or Denise and let them know. As always, please pick up your kids from the nursery and kids' church. Please say hi to someone you know, and please join us for coffee and snacks upstairs. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>